Very, very, very popular. That is the subject, friends. A gal with charm can walk off the farm and start earning dividends. If she's popular, 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 friends. How to be very, very popular. Why learn it from a book? You do just great if you've got the bait. You land them without a hook. With that popular, popular, popular look. Just become a stamp collector, cause all men are in scamps. You're apt to be a stamp collector. You'd be surprised how many men like stamps. How to be very, very popular. Here's the advice we bring. A gal who waits can wind up with me. She's first with the wedding ring. If a gal is a popular, very popular day. Do you think that guy would really do something to us if we went to the police and talked? 
Are you nuts? You saw what he did to Miss Cherry Blossom Wang, didn't you? But she was a friend of his. We don't hardly even know him. Well, if he chewed a friend about six times, what do you think he'd do to a mere acquaintance? But what are we going to do? This is beginning to look like the end. Come here. You know something? That woman's got a very kindly face. She's got a very kindly piece of salami there, too. That's what I said. I think I'll go in there and talk to her. Me too. No, you stay here. fighting it you've got to cooperate in a thing like this that's the whole secret of hypnotism cooperation well keep watching this thing but you can do what i tell you now will you relax and cooperate a little but i don't feel anything you will just lie back and listen to what i'm trying to do all right we have some of those peanuts okay I beg your pardon? Isn't that a drumstick? A tripe. Fried? Yes. Oh. Well, what's the matter? Are you sick? No. <gasps> Just hungry. Oh, you poor kid. Come in. Sit down. I'm terribly sorry. You don't mind if I shut this door for you? Give me one of those drumsticks. You can nail it up for all I care. Well, it is a little late, you know. Help yourself. Thanks. I'm an unemployed school teacher. Not at all. What are you gonna do, call the cops? No, no, I hate cops, too. Well, he shot her, that's what happened. Shot her right in the middle of her number. And then he said he'd shoot us, too, if we didn't get lost. We're in this dressing room, see? And all of a sudden, there was something sounded like shooting. Then this fellow busted in the door. All he was trying to do was get out of the place. But with this old lady stalking, I guess he couldn't see any too well to begin with. What old lady stocking? The one he was wearing over his face so nobody couldn't tell who he was. Well, uh, with this stocking over his face, how could you identify him? You cannot keep butting your head into brick walls like that and expect a stocking not to get a run in it. Well, what did he say? Mm, not much. Just that he'd shoot us dead if we ever opened our traps about him. 
Well, what was he, the girl's lover? Well, if he was, he certainly took a very peculiar way of showing it. Well, don't you think if you went to the police and explained the situation, they'd, they'd protect you? I had a friend in Chicago once. She saw a friend of hers shoot another friend, and the police certainly protected her all right. They said she was a material witness, and they protected her right into the jailhouse for six months. Would you mind I use your phone for a minute? Not at all, help yourself. If you'd be so kindly. What I'd like to do is go underground. If I could ever figure out how you got down there. Long distance. Long distance? I want to talk to Mr. Cedric Flagg in 12 Oaks, California, and reverse the charges, please. This is that other girl that saw him's father. He's a little high strung. What is your name and phone number? This is College City 7268, and my name's Tornado. Miss Stormy Tornado. Are you kidding? No, and if you'd like to step outside in the alley in about five minutes, I'll be very happy to prove it to you. Hello? Is this Mr. Cedric Flagg? Yes. You have a collect call from College City. Will you accept the charges? Are you out of your mind? Yes? It's about Curly, Mr. Flagg. She's in very serious trouble, like life and death. Who's Curly? Your daughter. Oh, of course. What's old Curl up to now? Will you accept the charges? Uh, who's this talking? Stormy Tornado. I'm a friend of hers. What did you say the name was? Stormy Tornado. I'm interpretative dancer. Uh, listen, sister, you better call up sometime when you're sober. Stormy Tornado for the love of feet. Uh, listen, operator. What number are you calling? I'm not calling any number. They're calling me. Just a moment, please. Somebody just called me. I am sorry, but the number you are calling does not answer. Shall I try again in 20 minutes? That's a lot. You want to get me expelled? Curly? Yeah? You think you can get in here without being seen? For what purpose? Don't argue. The man's got a fried chicken in here. Hold him. Look, Miss Tornado, this is a very risky thing I'm doing, so I've got to ask both of you to be as quiet as possible about it. What is all this expel stuff? From school, of course. You're still a pupil? Yeah, that's right. Well, what kind of a crying out loud kind of school could you be in? This one, Bristol College. This is a college? Well, of course, what'd you think it was? I think you better let me out of here. What, what do you mean? I had all the college boys I want on Saturday nights, thank you. Tanked up on that two dollar gin. Now don't be ridiculous. I'm trying to help you. Gone the sun from the lake. What's from that? The hills, Miss Sylvester. From the sky. The house mother. All is well. Safely rest. Sleep is nigh. Oh. Good night, all. Good night, Good night Michelle. Good night, Michelle. Dear, happy children. Now your eyes are becoming very, very tired. Very, very tired. And your head is getting heavier and heavier. And your eyes are weighted with lead. Look, Daddy. Weighted with lead, I tell you. And you're so sleepy. 
So sleepy, you feel you could sleep for 24 hours. Tired and heavy and sleepy. Tired and heavy and sleepy. I'm getting awful sleepy. I think I'll go to bed. If you... Hello. Hello. You looking for somebody? Yes. Who? The man with the chicken. There's no chickens in this room, lady. You must have the wrong... What's the matter with you? Nothing. Then what are you looking like that for? Like what? Lady, I'm afraid you better shove on out of here. It's a little late, you know. It's after ten. What kind of chicken? Fry. We better get her out of here. Just a minute. What's your name, honey? Curly. Curly what? Flag. You think she's gassed? I don't know, but... Stick your fingers in your ears, Curly. <laughs> Jumping Moses. It's an old B. Boy, I've done it. You say she's a pretty sensible girl? They don't come any sensibler. You mean she'll do anything you tell her to? Anything that's not against her fundamental principles. Well? Well, what? Well, what are her fundamental principles? How should I know? I never saw her until she walked through that door. What are your fundamental principles, honey? What fundamental principles? Also, it depends on whether this is a light catalepsis or a deep somnambulism. What's the difference? Well, if it's a light catalepsis, she's liable to bust out of it at any minute. But if it's a deep somnambulism, she's real gone. And can anybody bring her out of it but numero uno? That right, baby? Right. How about a little kiss, then? Just to show the folks the way things is. Well, that's one fundamental principle you can scratch. Have one. Me? Sure. Help yourself. Friend of mine. No, I don't think I'd better. Not till I know her a little better, anyway. What difference does that make? It's on the house. Uh, no, I'm, I'm afraid I'm just a little too tense for anything like that tonight. Thanks, all the same, though. Okay, then, you get a rain check. Well, what do you think could have happened to her? But what could happen to a girl in a building full of college boys? <sighs> Give me your pen. What are you going to do? Just give her a little jab. What for? That's the test. If you jab her and she doesn't yell, you got yourself a deep somnambulism. Now, wait a minute, Eddie. Don't you think we've gone just about as far as we ought to in that direction? What's the matter with you? That's what science is, tests. How do you think they discovered 7-Up? You know what I think we ought to do? What? I think we ought to get somebody else in on this, like Mr. Wedge. And have to whack her up three ways? Are you nuts? But this is a very spooky business, Eddie. How do you know she's not going to blow her top? What are you doing now? Turning chicken? Right. What are you, some sort of dancer? Student. Student? A st Interpretative student. You... Come again? What they say, exotic? Toby, boy, history is being made in this room tonight. You ever hear of Salome? Yes. But not definitely. Well, she was a dancer, too. Oh, yes. At the Star and Garter. That's the one. Very artistic worker. Well, you're Salome now, honey. At the Star and Garter? No, right here.
Soon I'm going to have to call this thing off. There she is. I'm sorry, Mr. Jiminy. Has everybody got one? Have you got a girl in your room? Yeah, and she's hypnotized. What do you mean, hypnotized? Eddie hypnotized her, and she's in a deep something or other. Well, who, for crying out loud, asked him to do that? This boy didn't know what he's talking about. Eddie couldn't hypnotize a cat. Well, that's just what I told him. Where is she? Now, take it easy. Take it easy, he Because says. I'm going to take you to her if you can just keep your mouth shut. Is the hall clear? This isn't much better than being shot at. All clear. Now, please, will you? You better keep your mouth shut if you don't want to be turned in. What's the matter with you? Knock it off, will you? Can't anybody do anything with her but me? She's in a deep somnambulism. You're flaky. She's... Deep what? Hey, give me your pen. We'll soon find out if she's in any deep somnambulism or not. What are you going to do? I'm going to test her, that's all. Give me your hand. Give me your hand. Give the man your hand, honey. You see? Just like Swingali. Well, how on earth did you do it? Well, I couldn't get in the movies the other evening, so I went to this class lecture on hypnotism. But how'd you get a hold of her? Well, that was an accident. He was buzzing away at me, and she walked in and it ricocheted off on her. You mean you were letting this dingbat experiment on you? He said he could give me a powerful personality. And all the poor kid wanted was a little piece of salami. Salami dances. Salami, honey, not salami. Oh. Somebody ought to shut you up in the penitentiary. Not in. Not in. All right, then. Now, let's get her out of it. What do you mean, get her out of it? I just got her in. Look, Eddie, these girls are in a very serious jam. This is no time for clowning around. You snap that kid out of it. But I'm studying her, Mr. Wedge. This is a very scientific setup. And I am not going to unhypnotize her yet. What do you figure to do? Keep her goofed up like that till she dies? Expel him. What are you talking about? He can't expel me. Yeah, I'm the only one around here gets expelled. Just because you've been around here for about 20 years doesn't give you any hold over me, Dad. Eddie's handling that too, isn't he? Yeah, but it's still pretty rugged, you know. Hiding out all the time, sleeping down in the basement with all those cats... And half the time, nothing to eat for breakfast but some Fritos. Do you mean he doesn't even belong to this school and he's still hanging around here hypnotizing people? But what would you want him to do? Go home and tell his mother he'd been kicked out? Maybe break her poor old heart? Well, that's the most unheard of thing I ever heard of. And just to keep the record straight, it was me that put the whammy on her, not him. Well, two and a half cheers for you. What's he staking you for? Hundred dollars. But that includes a diploma, remember? Oh, yeah. How's that coming along? Just great. Want to see it? 
He does a perfectly beautiful forgery of President Tweed's signature. What kind of a college is this? For crookery? I don't think my old man would go for it. He's a pretty smart cookie. But my mother's so nearsighted, she can't hardly read those cardboards they hold up at football games. Especially if she thinks diploma is spelled with two P's. I didn't claim it was perfect. All I said was, I w- What are you going to do? You're going to snap that girl out of her or not? Well, of all the dirty, crummy tricks. Yes or no, whichever you want. But look, I got a hundred bucks in that paper. Okay, if that's the way you want it. No, 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 please don't. Don't burn it. Mr. Wedge. So long, honey. Please, may I kiss her goodbye? Just don't try to show off. Thanks. Say. Could I pick up that rain check now? He didn't get one first time around. Oh, sure, and line up the rest of the college too, why don't you? afraid of. We have them every now and then. <gasps> Whose is it? My brother's. All right, break it up. She's not going to China. Let's have it, Eddie. It was as if the whole world shook. All right, let's have it. All out, honey. Come on, baby, that's all. It's over now, honey. Can't you hear me, curly girl? Yes, I hear you. Well, knock it off, then. Don't you understand? This is official. Come out of it. The earth itself seemed to tremble. Come on, Eddie, we haven't got all night about this thing. I'm trying, Mr. Wedge. Wake up, I tell you. Wake up! A real scientific Einstein, huh? Do you know what you're doing or not? Well, I'm not sure. I didn't go to the second lecture. What second lecture? The one where he tells you how to get him out of it. You mean you can't ungoof her? Well, I'm doing the best I can, for Pete's sake. Come on, baby. Bang, bang, bang. You hear me? Bang, bang, bang. Where's Toby? I don't know. Did you see this? What? Holy Moses. Say, this bald-headed barber must be a loony from way back. You mean he's really crazy? Well, his mother says, my son has probably spent more time in the nut house than he has cutting hair. You reckon he'll really try to kill him? How should I know? Somebody ought to break your neck. I'm sorry, Mr. Wedge. I didn't know I could hypnotize anybody, much less a girl. School's not ready out, remember, until after diplomas tonight. And if I'm kicked off this gravy train on account of you, I'm the one that's going to break it, too. If I'd known I could hypnotize a girl, I'd have been at it years ago. Maybe... Well, all we could do, I suppose, try to keep him undercover until tonight anyway. But what about the egghead? What egghead? That fatty barber. Well, if he shows up, maybe you can hypnotize him, too.
Stormy. It's Wedgwood. I've got some breakfast for you. Good morning. Well, if you'll pardon a four-letter word, you're a real cutie. Well, how'd it go? I'm okay, but boy, what a hangover she's going to have. She's a very nice kid when she's not goofed up like that. Only trouble with her is her family. What's the matter with her family? Nutty as Hershey bars, the whole bunch of them. And for all the good they do her, they might just as well be living in outer space. That's why she's so lonely. Lonely? That's why she took up interpretative dancing. Well, I don't see how she could have picked a better job to straighten out that difficulty. That's what I told her. Want some of this? Yeah, thanks. I've never been so popular in my life since I started interpretating. I tried that already about 50 times. You might just as well stick it in a wax apple. Did you know that fellow that shot that girl was insane? You mean real Meshuga? Apparently. What's more, they placed you girls here to College City. Who told him? The bus driver that brought you here. And after that look he got. Now, I don't want to make too much of it, but if he's really after you, all he's got to do, you know, is look in the paper this morning. And such a good-looking guy, too. You know what I think you girls ought to do? What? Go to the police and ask them to protect you. Not me. I'm not going to get mixed up in it. But you're already mixed up in it. You're the key to the whole case. Without your identification, how do you think the cops are going to pin it on that monkey? You don't catch me tangling with any psycho. Well, strictly up to you. But stay put here, will you? Are you really so worried about it? Only for you and her. What you really want is we should beat it, don't you? Not as long as you think there's any danger for you. Look, what's your first name? Fillmore. Look, Mr. Wedge, I wouldn't blame you, not after all you've done for us. You could get expelled out of here for this, and we don't want to get anybody expelled out. Except maybe that Eddie. Well, that, that's not it at all. Believe me, there's not the remotest possibility of trouble for any of us as long as you stick in this room. You just stay right here and we're, we're all okay. Have you really been here 20 years? Of course not. <laughs> Only 17. What is it? Arithmetic? It... Arithmetic? You don't look any dumber than that other fella, that Toby. What are you talking about? You don't have to be ashamed about it with me, Mr. Wedge. I was through exactly the same thing in the seventh grade. And you know what for? Improper fractions, for crying out loud. Half of this, half of that, half of some of that potato salad. Three years they kept me horsing around with that cockamania. Good heavens, you mean you think I've been 17 years trying to get through this slimy little nursery school? Slimy? So who said she was dead? Slimy dances. Dope, not Salome. Oh. I think you better wash your ears out, too, while you're about it. Toby, dear. What are you doing here? Me? Weren't you... Pardon me. Expelled? Yes, ma'am, I was. I just came back to see Eddie graduate. Oh. Oh, I... Unutterably touching. Friendship of itself, a holy tie, is made more sacred by adversity. Well, you can certainly say that again, Miss Sill. Come in to see me before you go this time, will you? Yes, ma'am, I will. God bless. Let me get you straight on one thing. I'm here, and always have been, of my own volition. It is? And for a very practical reason. As long as I'm a student here at Bristol, I'm being supported, and supported very handsomely, too. How come? By my grandfather's estate. 
Do you mean he wanted you to be educated till you die? Well, well, that wasn't the idea, actually. He just assumed that it would be the usual four years. But he died suddenly, before the lawyers could get around to putting a limit on the arrangements, you see. So I, I trust you can understand how I shouldn't care to be thrown out of here. I'll be back in a few minutes. How are you, Miss? Come in, Wilmot. Close that door, will you? Yes, sir. Three quarters of the things I have to do in this job are so shameful, an open door frightens me half out of my wits. Now, about this young Toby Marshall. Well, what about him, sir? Well, he was a friend of yours, wasn't he? Uh, yes, sir. Do you know where he is now? I'm afraid not, sir. If I had a pistol, I'd shoot myself. What seems to be the trouble, sir? I have murdered Santa Claus. Why couldn't someone have told me who this boy's father was? Well, who is he, sir? B.J. Marshall, I'm at last informed is Bristol's richest alumnus. He's so rich, he laughs at Texans. And do you know what his deepest and fondest hope is? Yeah, to get richer? Listen to this. Arriving with a heart overflowing with pride and joy to see my son graduated from that great university that has shaped my own life so wisely. And be assured that my old school will not find me ungrateful. Suggest you begin reflecting now on a suitable form of endowment that will be an enduring monument to my affection for my alma mater. Signed, B.J. Marshall. Father of a son who was fell by short division. But, but he couldn't have been graduated anyway, sir. Who told me he was just rounding out his fourth year as a freshman. Now, let's not be romantic, Belmore. B.J. Marshall is said to be good for a million. And for a million, I would graduate a three-headed goat with honors. The president of a college like Bristol is not here to waste his time on nonsense like education. He's here to get the dough. But, sir, how does it happen that Mr. Marshall doesn't know about uh, Toby's unfortunate record here? It seems that for the past three or four years, he's been in the east somewhere. Persia, Arabia, one of those Ivan de Carlo countries. He's some kind of earth mover, turns rivers around. Builds bridges over oceans, all that sort of muck. I don't think that he was even expected back in this country for another decade or two. And uh, Mrs. Marshall, sir? I've been calling Mrs. Marshall for three days, and for three days she's been in the shower. Either a very dirty woman or a very clean one. Is there anyone else in Fraternity Hall who might know where this boy is? Well, I don't know, sir. I could ask. Will you do that? Yes, sir. As I see it now... This unfortunate lad has been the innocent victim of one of the most shocking miscarriages of justice since the Dreyfus case. And we must all of us do everything in our power to right this outrageous wrong. We must indeed, sir. Meanwhile, I've got a pistol here somewhere. If only I can remember where I put it. Where have you got him? Got who? Those two chorus girls. Haven't you seen what the paper says? No. Well, the police think they may be here in the college. Yes, sir. Will you call Denver again and see if Mrs. Marshall has dried herself off yet?
Yes. My name is Moon. I'm a cop from San Francisco. Come in. Dr. Tweed? Yes. Sergeant Moon? Yes. I'm on the Cherry Blossom Wang case. Are you indeed? I'm after those two girls. What two girls? The two girls who saw the killer. So far, I haven't understood one word you've said. But go on. I'm looking for a couple of girls who were wanted as material witnesses in a murder case. They were last seen about 10 o'clock last night in the vicinity of this campus. Do you think it possible that any of your young men might have uh, given them shelter? How old are they? In their 20s, I believe. No doubt about it if they could get their hooks on them. Look, you have no idea what a collection of hyenas we've got in this institution. During the panty raids last spring, I thought I'd go absolutely crazy. Hey, Midge. Yes, sir. Have you heard anything about a couple of girls in any of the boys' dorms last night? No, sir. Then they probably aren't here. She knows every piece of scandal in town, whether it's happened or not. Have you tried Stanford? I'd like to look Bristol over first, if you don't mind. Just prowl around, make a few inquiries here and there. By all means. But can you keep it quiet? I'll be as quiet as a little mouse. Well, no need to go that far. The fact is, all I need around here today is a big story in the papers about desegregation of the sexes in the boys' dormitories. Why not? Why not what? Don't you want the human race to go on? Not around here. Not until after commencement, anyway. Say, what's the matter with you? It's the publicity I'm trying to stop, not mankind. Just curious, that's all. You're a pretty little thing. Well, if that's the kind of cops they got in San Francisco, I just as soon live in Los Angeles. Get Miss Sill on the phone for me. She won't have a pistol, but she might know where I could lay my hands on a good stout piece of rope. Miss Sill, I'm in no mood for Longfellow this morning. What I asked you was... But that's it. He's come all the way back here to see a friend graduate. You mean he's here now? That's exactly what I was trying to tell you. He's come back. Oh, bless your sainted heart, Miss Sill. Bring the young moron to me at once. Of course, Doctor. We'll be right over. <laughs> Goodbye, Marlon, darling. Sure, I'm terribly sorry, Miss Sill. Break it up, will you? I I thought you knew her. This is uh, Toby's mother. Mother? Stepmother, I mean. That is real mother, of course. How do you do, Mrs. Marshall? Uh, how do you do? Mrs. Marshall just flew in, you know, and she's still full of that junk you take for air sickness. Oh, how unpleasant for her. Uh. Would she like to come to my room and lie down for a little while? Oh, no, thanks. We'll have a rolling here in a minute or two. Mother dear. Company, Mrs. Marshall. Give her a little boost, will you? I've got some aromatic spirits of ammonia. There we are. She must weigh close to a ton. Cut the clowning with you. Oh, has he been drinking again? My leg's asleep. All righty, Mrs. Marshall. Who's Mrs. Marshall? You are, don't you remember? And this is Miss Sylvester, our house mother. It's a very great pleasure, Mrs. Marshall. 
Will you say hello to Miss Sylvester? Hello to Miss Sylvester? I'll tell Dr. Tweed she's here. He'll be so delighted. Will you walk over with me? Go on. I'll take care of Mom. Well, I'll have to get my tie and jacket, Miss Sill. Would you wait for me out front? Of course. I'm sorry you can't come with us, Mrs. Marshall. Dr. Tweed will be so disappointed. Don't be long, Toby. He's most anxious to see you. What did you have to say that for? What else could I say? Who else could you be smacking away with like that? Well, what about my sister? You haven't got a sister. That's true. But she doesn't even look like a stepmother. What difference does that make? Your old lady won't be here anyway, will she? How do I know? I called her last week to find out, but she was in the shower. Look, if she were going to be, she'd have said so. And with your old man in Bulgaria or wherever it is, who's going to know the difference? But you heard what she said. Miss Sue is going to tell Dr. Tweed. So what can he do? You're already disgraced. And besides, how would he know anyway? He's never even seen your mother. Now, just a minute there. But if we really had to go to bat with this kid, we could make it stick. Eddie, listen to me. I saw your mother once. Oh, what's the use? I can't take any more of this. If they come for me again, just tell them I passed on. Do you hear me, Mrs. Marshall? Who's Mrs. Marshall? Just for the sake of argument, we'll say you are. Toby's mother, Mrs. B.J. Marshall. Tall, stately, aristocratic, a gentle lady of the old school. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Marshall, B.J. Marshall. Good morning, Mr. Marshall. What a pleasure this is, to be sure. I was just thinking about you. Uh -huh. Will you go in and sit down? I'll be with you in just one moment. Keep that jughead son of his out of there, you understand? Get rid of him until I can get a chance to talk to him. Oh, yes. Tell Irene to fix up a diploma for him. Summa cum laude. You've got a very fine boy, Mr. Marshall. A very fine boy indeed. Really? In some respects, one of the most remarkable students we've ever had here. No. Oh, yes, of course. Well, uh, how do you do in mathematics? I've never seen anything like it. Economics? Well, you should see some of his marks. What about his behavior? I don't think I've had to speak to the lad about his behavior in months. This is remarkable, Doctor. Especially when you realize that we had to use influence to get him through kindergarten. Well, his record here has been absolutely unique. <laughs> this is going to knock Mrs. Marshall right on her bustle. She's not here with you, huh? No, I flew directly from New York. I tried to get her on the phone from the airport in Chicago. She wasn't available. I know. I did wire her to come on if she could. <laughs> I just want to see her face when she realizes that I'm giving away a lot of money not to her family. Oh, yeah. The endowment. <laughs> I'd forgotten all about that. <laughs> you know, no. Oh, yes, of course. Doctor, there is one more thing. What's that? Well, how about Toby and the girls? What girls? Well, I don't care what girls. What I want to know is, well, has the boy been getting out and about at night? Oh, no, nothing like that. <laughs> We've had no trouble whatever with Toby on that score. As a matter of fact... None at all? None whatever. He's quite a studious youngster, you know, and his books come first always. As one of his teachers was saying to me just the other day... But is that quite healthy? Is what quite healthy? Well, with a world full of pretty girls, is that what a boy ought to be doing? Sitting around reading some silly book? Not always, no. But you've also got to remember that Toby's a bit on the shy side. Of course he's shy. That's exactly what I'm talking about. But he could get mixed up with a shy girl, couldn't he? Pardon me. Yes? Miss Sill is here, and she says it's extremely important. I'll be right out. Uh, 
Will you excuse me for just a moment? Of course. What's happened now? He's gone again. That's impossible. His father's here. As if the earth itself had opened up and swallowed him. Never mind what the earth did. What became of the boy? I have no idea. He was there with his mother in Eddie's his room. His mother? Yes, they were there in Eddie's room. Was she swallowed up too? No, she's still there. They were... If that fellow in there says anything, give him some fortune magazines. I've got to talk to Mrs. Marshall. If that boy has ratted on me already... They're, they're both of them scared to death and quite incapable of making any sensible decision. You're perfectly right. The only smart thing is to put them where they'll be safe. Sir, his real mother's dead, of course. Mrs. Marshall, this is Dr. Tweed, president of Bristol College, the gentleman I've just been telling you about. How do you do, Mrs. Marshall? As I was just saying to Mr. Marshall, what a great pleasure it is to meet the parents of such a dear, remarkable boy. I am a gentle lady of the old school. You are indeed, ma'am. And how true it is that breeding always tells. I am also very wealthy. <laughs> Nothing could be more fortunate for all of us. She's still a little junked up, you know. Junked up? She just flew in from Denver and she's still full of all those sleeping pills and anti-air sick stuff. There is also a sort of simple majesty about me. No question about that. I... Uh... I assume that you're already familiar with this, uh, uh, this unfortunate situation with Toby. Yes. And he is sheer heaven. That's the way it is with the entire family, sir. Absolutely mad about each other. Where is Toby now? He just stepped out for a moment. Will you take a look around for him? I'd like to have a few words alone with Mrs. Marshall. Of course, sir. But did I understand you to say that Mr. Marshall was here now, too? Yes, but please don't mention that. We want to keep his presence here a surprise for Toby. I'm sure it will be. Would you excuse me for a few moments, Mrs. Marshall? Just keep in mind that Dr. Tweed is a very fine man indeed. A friend to every boy in this school. And if there is anything he can do for Toby, I'm sure he'll be happy to do it. So be very nice to him. <laughs> very good. Excuse me, sir. I'll get him. Won't you sit down? You are such a fine man. Well, I try to be, of course. But I'm afraid I make my share of mistakes. I want to be very nice to you. Oh, that's, that's awfully good of you. And, and, I, and I do appreciate it. Would you like some money? Money? Oh, no, 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 no. It's not a question of money. That is not directly anyway. It's a matter of simple justice. I am very wealthy. So I've been told. But about Toby, we don't want to disappoint his father, do we? I want to be just as nice to you as I possibly can. Well, in that case... I'll admit, I acted hastily about the boy. Quite hastily, in fact. After all, what was it but a boyish lark? 
When, when one is young and spring is in the air, who can say which of us But I'm happy to say it is not too late to rectify the matter. So what I propose now is... You are so wonderful. So what I propose now is this. How can I be very, very nice to you? Well, for one thing, Mrs. Marshall, you can stop breaking my cigars. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. If we can spare Mr. Marshall the painful knowledge of my little error, I would be most happy not only to restore to to good standing in school, but to graduate him forthwith. It is true that he was a wee bit behind the rest of the class, but who can say for sure that he could not have made up this deficiency during the past few months? I've got to be very, very nice to you. This may very well be your idea, Mrs. Marshall. But the fact is, you are driving me nuts. Tell Dr. Tweed I'll drop back a little later. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, sir. It's quite all right. I'll just take a little stroll around outside. Would you like to leave your coat here? No, thank you. Say... Maybe I'll pop over and give Toby a surprise. But hadn't you rather I sent for Quite all right, quite all right. Walk will do me good. But, but this is only on condition, you understand, that we remain more or less as we are. Whatever you say. We'll just sit here and relax for a moment or two, and, and, and then perhaps we can resume our discussion. Let's. To tell you the truth, this is the last sort of monkey shine I was looking for here today. And I don't mind confessing, I'm a little rusty at these shenanigans. Pardon me. Do you know where I can find Toby Marshall? Who are you? I'm his father. Take a look in Fraternity Hall, room 102 on the first floor. 102. Thank you. A little rusty, perhaps, but not entirely without experience, you understand. Why, only a few years ago, in fact. It was a rare night that didn't see me setting forth into the darkness, smoking a Turkish delight, and fairly reeking with toilet water. Now, curly girl. Pardon me. Mr. Marshall! Get up, honey. No, no, no. Get up, Mrs. Marshall! I've got to explain this. Mr. Marshall! Mr. Marshall, please! Mr. Marshall! They're, they're really very nice kids. One's a little foggy at the moment, but... Tommy? Curly? Oh, sure. Everybody should. Just take a look around anyway. I'm sorry, I can't imagine what happened. Might keep our eye open for old Baldy, too, while we're about it. Get me some arsenic at once. Looking for those dames. 
Probably 40 miles away from here by now. What's all this bash around here? Graduation day. Commencement. Then let's have a drink. No, thanks. I'm looking for my son. Which one? My name's Flag. Mine's Marshal. Glad to know you, Marshal. We must get together for more of these little chats. But everybody makes mistakes, Mr. Marshal. Not as many as cops. All I know is that if Joe Friday couldn't handle the case any better than this, he wouldn't have a sponsor for ten minutes. Was he in there? Was who in there? I thought you were looking for your son. Thanks. I was afraid I was going to have to walk. <laughs> You see, I called the police and told them I thought I spotted old Baldy hanging around the girl's dorm. The way I figure it is... Now, remember this. This is a very dangerous man, and you may have to use your guns. But if you do, aim high. Shoot in the air over their heads. You understand? Yes, sir. All right. Move out very quietly. And take a sight on every bald-headed man in this crowd. What's come over the old school, anyway? First, my son, an honor student. They lose him completely. The next thing I know, I flush the president. An old crock about 150 years old, necking with one of the girls in the boys' dormitory. Then what happens but the cops haul me down to the police station and try to tell me that I shot a Chinese hoochie-coochie dancer the other night. Now, will you very kindly explain to me how it would be possible for me... Just to... stick them up and take it easy. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, sir. My mistake, uh, it's on account of your head, you know. And the magic... We're wasting our time. Those girls are gone. But how can they be? The cops have got the town sewed up. They're lining up, boys. The bus station, the depot, the airport. Take you straight to the booby hatch. I am very wealthy. Very wealthy? Well, hasten, Jason, fetch the basin. Listen, Miss Goofball.
this way, my dear. We don't want to miss our diploma now, do we? Hey, anybody here? No, we're all over at the graduation exercises tonight. I'm looking for my daughter. Well, she's not in here, and I'll swear to that on a stack of Bibles a mile high. Well, who have you got in there? That's an absolute lie, and I can prove it. What about a woman named Stormy Tomato? You know anything about her around here? I don't know. Name what? All I know is what she told me, Stormy Tomato. Well, for heaven's sakes. You haven't got her in there, have you? Now, look, whoever you are, you get out of here and stop that kind of talk, you understand? Who are you, anyway? The janitor. Well, if you happen to hear anything, I'll be rocking around outside. Fellow well, sounds to me like he's a card or two short. Operator, get me the police, quick. Who was that? That crazy man. Which one? That bald-headed fellow that shot Cherry Blossom Wang. What are you, honorary? I wouldn't be at all surprised. In the absence of President Tweed, who I regret to say has suffered rather a serious indisposition, permit me to welcome you to Bristol College's 75th commencement. This unhappy situation finds me, I'm afraid, quite unprepared, but I have managed to jot down a few words covering the history of our beloved college. Bristol College was founded in 1880 by a small group of dedicated educators. Bristol College has had a glorious history. Graduates have become leaders of the world, and we at Bristol are proud that they have played a part in the making of a better world. And now, members of the graduating class, by the authority vested in this college by the State Department of Education, we now award to each and every one of you the degree of Bachelor of Arts. This evening needs no introduction. Thank you. <clears throat> the subject of my remarks this evening is the influence of Greek history on contemporary scholarship. So let us go back first to the fall of Troy. Greece was apparently uninhabited during the Paleolithic times, but the remains. Pardon me. Would you be good enough to tell me why my son, Toby Marshall, isn't listed in the graduating class here? Are you serious? Of course I'm serious. Why, Toby Marshall was expelled something like four months ago. Expelled? Besides, he was still a freshman. But why was he expelled? That, I'm afraid, I would not care to discuss with a member of the opposite sex. Uh... The most persistent of their enemies were the Persians. In 480 BC, they called upon the Greeks to submit to our... Where on earth did you go? We've been looking for you everywhere. Come on. Look. Operator, will you please try that number again? That's police headquarters, and there must be somebody there. One moment, please. 
Where's Dr. Tweed? Not in. Not in anyway. Please, Doctor. I hear the trumpets of the morning blowing, and the black bat night has flown. Now, what on earth is that from? Toby boy, come in my office, son, and fear nothing. Xerxes, with an army of 180,000, invaded Greece through Thrace and Macedonia. The Greeks were supposed to hold them up at the pass of the Magna, but most of them withdrew, leaving Leonidas with 300 Spartans and 700 Thespians to stem the tide. This brings us down to the Battle of Salamis. Salamis? Now it's Salamis. Salamis dances. say that, but even but if he But he is... saw us, he'll follow us. He's crazy, don't you understand? Please, just take it easy. You're perfectly safe here, believe me. Are you sure? Possible. Hey, Curly! Stormy! I know you're here, I saw you. So you might as well come on out. That's him. Get in the bathroom. Are you going to kill him? Well, not if I can help it. Either you come on out or I'm coming in after you.
to tie him up. Who is it? What do you mean, who is it? Oh, we're going to have to apologize to this gentleman. You're kidding. This isn't the shooter. Holy Toledo. Get me a wet towel, quick. He should have knocked. Did you ever see such a face? Never. Now, just a minute. You're getting very warm, though. But look at his no hair. I'll get the towel. How am I not? But you don't have to worry. You're bound to get him sooner or later. If only the towels hold out. What are you doing now? Let somebody else explain them. For somebody that's trying to keep out of the public eye, you certainly go about it in a funny way. Who are you now? I want Toby. Okay, here. Put this on. Oh, somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are light. Wouldn't you be more comfortable in a chair? Never mind a chair. Just get me some aspirin. Oh, dear, you've been shot. Never have I seen such a distressing day. Girls disrobing in public. People shooting each other in the presence of the faculty. If you think it's distressing now, just wait until I get my hands on that idiot tweed. How many? Give me about a dozen to start with. Yeah. Hey, Toby! Who's that? We got the white goddess out here. She was walking around out there in her nothing outfit. Come in. Come on in, girl, girl. Oh! Switch it, honey. You've got a back in. I know he was busted out of here. What else is there to know? Listen, Mr. Marshall. All this dear boy intended to do was to watch the football game on television. And then it started. Take a break. Drink some beer. Now drink some more beer. Never mind the game. You just keep drinking beer. Drink the dry beer. Drink the wet beer. Drink the truly fine purple beer. Just pour it down, baby. Quarts and quarts and quarts of it. And to heck with this game. Turn this silly machine off and just drink, 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 drink. And you know what a dear, sweet, accommodating boy Toby is. You mean he was gassed? To the gills. And that's why he organized if you'll pardon the expression, the panty raid. What's a panty raid? Oh, yes, you've been away. Well, a panty raid, if you'll forgive me again, is a new phenomenon in this country in which uh, the boys of a school, bless their innocent hearts, are stirred by youth and the first touch of spring in the air to move en masse on the girls' dormitories and demand certain uh, tokens of gallantry. 
And my Toby led one of those things? The most successful in the history of old Bristol. Well, if this isn't a lovely graduation, I never hope to see one. What happened? Doctor, there's a murderer and two very important material witnesses hiding around here somewhere. And we're going through every building on the campus. Uh, all right for yours? Go as far as you like. Thank you, sir. But I can tell you right now, you won't find any girls there. Doctor, do you still want to talk to Toby's father? Not unless you think you've got a bit of ant based on him. Well, I just saw him going into fraternity hall. Well, it's a sucker bet, but I can't be much worse off than I am. You know what room? Eddie Jones, as I should imagine. Turn off the lights, and take a look outside. Hold it. I want to thank you, sir, for what you've done for my boy. He came here a child, now he's a man. I assure you. For this, I forgive everything else. Your foolish deception, that idiotic arrest, even this lump on my head. Someone clobbered, Mr. Marshall. No. One of the rooms down the hall, never mind that. There's only one thing of importance now. That's the splendid development of my boy. Which one? Toby. No, no, I mean which room? Oh, I don't know. It all happened so quickly. You need a doctor? No, no, no. I feel all right now. Then, uh, then you think we may still have that little talk you mentioned? One of the first ones, I think. If you are prepared to go as high, say, uh, as a million? I think I'd know it if I saw the door again. Just a minute. Have you any idea where that boy is? I thought he was with you. No. Mr. Marshall. I, I didn't know who he was. You mean you didn't care whom you clubbed? That, I didn't mean that, sir. Sorry, Fillmore, but I'm afraid this is the end of you at Bristol. And of me, too, probably. Get me a wet towel. Here you are. How do you do? Sometimes I wish I had never been born. Mr. Marshall. Mr. Marshall, dear. Now, that was a smart one. I'm sorry, I forgot to turn it off this morning. What are you doing with my clock anyway? What about that chicken? What chicken? Fried, wasn't it? Well, how do you like that? Look, 24 hours, right on the nose, exactly like I said, remember? Welcome back to Earth, space girl. Get lost, Buster. How do you get out of this trap? But you remember me, don't you? Yeah, I remember you. What do I remember you from? I kissed you, don't you remember? Go on, show her. Like this. You remember? No, that wasn't it. Go on, give her the old number one. No, that wasn't it either. But I love you, don't you understand? Hey, this looks like a big one. Come on, let's get out of here. 
Break it up, will you? This is it. Don't you worry, Mr. Marshall. We're not going to let anything happen to you. Oh, it's all right, honey. It's, it's all over now. Well, that wasn't such a battle. Well, look who's here. Where's your girlfriend? I beg your pardon. Curly. I'm afraid you have the advantage of me. Hi, Curly. Okay, Dragon, call the wagon. But I tell you, I've never seen a Chinese cooch dancer. Look, mister, I've told you you're cleared. Now, what else do you want? But that means we're going to have to lock you girls up until we've got the killer. Sergeant? Those are our instructions from the San Francisco police, and there's nothing else we can do about it. Sergeant, what's the matter with you? Can't you see we're busy? It won't be so bad. You'll have the ladies' cells, and they've just been whitewashed, very bright and cheerful. Chief, what are you trying to do, make trouble for yourself? Now, look, just as soon as we've got them and you've identified them, that's all there is to it. You're out. Okay, if you don't want him. What who? The killer. The killer? The... Where is he? In the cab. Is that he? That's him, all right. Yes, I recognize he. about me you just don't care what you do i am just the most wonderful fellow you ever saw in your whole life what's the matter with you cross-eyed but what i do now look <laughs> 